Emily and I <laughs> are hopefully off on our adventures again. Um, we've left Kilmore and I have to be honest we were very busy at Kilmore. Um, I got the washing done, um, we had to buy a few bits and bobs for supplies, uh, obviously we got the regulator, we got all that sorted. We had hoped to buy some fuel to compensate for the fuel that um, we'd used getting into Kilmore, um, but there was a communication uh, error. <laughs> it just seems to be one of those things. Um, you know, we've had quite a few fuel docks already. Uh, a lot not, of fuel docks. Not in use. <laughs> and a couple of other bits and bobs. We've got plenty of pots to keep us occupied. But we are at least sailing. But a little update on the getting into Kilmore. Um, I talked to the harbour master and the channel is dredged to 1.9. So on very, very benign um, seas and stuff like that, uh, we could have easily got in at any uh, strength of tide. The issue is when you have got waves, because of course, some of the waves and the swell can reach anything easily over two meters. And uh, when we were um, requested to stay outside, we were in. <laughs> <laughs> one and a half to two metre swells which we weren't very happy about but there you go so that's why we were requested to stay in so uh, stay out to I me mean. so um, it's just one of those things you've got to be aware of um, because of the topography when the waves are coming from a particular angle they just pile up at the one area where there is a little bit of a low spot but anyway, we're sailing and we're going to have to restart our south coast adventure yet again! <laughs> successful I have now got my cup of, of tea, tea. Yay. Yay. <sighs> we are definitely British Bev yeah we're lost without tea having said that apparently per head of population the Irish drink more tea than any other country in the world I said um, yes oh okay fair enough yeah just, just point that out because of where we are yeah well and let's face it, ban tea is too easy in the supermarket. Ban coffee is a bit trickier down here. That is true. Yeah. Although green tea is uh, great in Aldi. Good, Good for Aldi. Aldi. variety. I'm not very good on the same thing day in day out. You're not doing very well in this one yet. It's the third time I've passed week here in two days. I know. This is actually the fifth time I've done this little passage. Um, we did it twice last year and we've already done it three times this year. So even though I've done this passage as I say, this is my third time this year. There's lots of differences because you're having to organise your boat to sail it and little bits of tweaking here and little bits of tweaking there. And I know they're not much, but it just gives you something different and something to do. Um, whereas when you're motoring, you just sort of like, 
point the boat where you want it to go and go. <laughs> Um, but we're going to have to be tacking and uh, we might even have to... Oh, not for a couple of miles yet. Yeah, we'll be tacking later. Uh -huh. um, and um, our sail, our Genoa is just lopping because we're so close hauled. So we might have to sort of like um, steer at one or two degrees. Yeah. <sighs> to uh, starboard. But other than that... There you go. It's going dead where it's night. So we're going right which is why we're going to have to tack later but it's just all these little things that you've got to do and you've got to keep yourself um, occupied and things like that and I think that's one of the reasons I like sailing it's just because I like variety which is why I'm really 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 looking forward to going far beyond Dunmore East because technically I have done it <laughs> But then we had the regulator problems and we turned round. We were halfway to Helvig. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, Trevor in the centre. Trevor centred. Okay, ready to attack. Ready. Let's get her on. Yeah, make sure she's, she's on standby. Stand she's on standby. Attacking. Ready. Seal's taking a strike. Traveller. Okay. It's She's hard. fine. It's going to harden it. things we've been talking about is old sailing terms or things that people used to say in days gone by when back in the age of sail um, Gainer's rather fascinated by the whole thing yeah basically um, as we're going towards Hook Head the land is um, we could see the lighthouse but we uh, couldn't see the land previously no we can see the land now uh, and that's called the old sailors used to call it raising the land because as you come over the curve of the earth, the curve, the earth being a sphere, um, you get more and more view. The high up things that you could see over the curve, like the lighthouse, are still there. But as you get closer and closer, there's less and less curvature of the earth between you and what you're looking at. And so it's like the land is rising up. So they used to say, they used to call it raising the land. And, behind and this, then, yeah, behind us we've got the salties. Um, and they're beginning to disappear under the curve of the earth because we're putting more and more curvature of the earth between us and them. Yeah, we can see um, currently at the moment um, the windmills at Consor. Consor, Consor Point, but they are really sinking, <laughs> but they're quite high up. Mm. Um, the land that they're on, no, I can't see that at all. So behind us we are sinking the land it's dropping below the horizon as if it's sinking into the sea and ahead of us we are raising the land like it's rising up from the seabed in front of us mm. and you know it's just one of these things that um Gainer and I suspect that sailors have always known the earth is curved <laughs> yeah because there's none just... of this flat earth malarkey yeah because even though where you are it looks pretty flat really but you know very well that there are things beyond that you can't see the land, but as you get closer, you can. Also, if you take the binoculars, you will see things like the sea is now halfway up the church in Kilmore. <laughs> I don't think Kilmore's flooded out. No, no, it's not. It's just that the curvature of the earth is such that, um, yeah. There's it's more, it's more, and more, more and more curvature of the earth between us and Kilmore, so it appears to be sinking into the sea. Yeah. It's just one of those little things. I like to broaden my knowledge. No, no. You like to broaden your horizons. Well, yes, I do. I like but the to... bad news is that unless you actually lift yourself up a bit higher, your horizon's always the same size. Yeah, that is true. So that's why when you climb mountains and everything, you have got, you can see for much further. Or if you're in an airplane, you can see for miles. That is true. We used to say when I was flying, there was a saying that, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. 
and you can see for bloody miles. <laughs> <laughs> Journey. As I said earlier, I like variety, and this is the fifth time I've done this journey. But I think um, this time we're doing an awful lot more tacking, whereas the other two we went pretty much straight. Whereas this time we're tacking like mad. But you know, like I say, you always get variety in sailing, and that's one of the aspects I like. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I look at the course and you can see there's been a few tacks. I think but things are changing now. I think this was our long tack course previously on port tack. Mm. But I think we're now doing better on starboard tack for the long course. Yeah. So it's just sort of like because the winds are shifting and tide things are is happening, shifting. tide is shifting. Uh, we did have to go against out on a foul tide. It's been but a foul tide all the way. It has, but the foul tide is now diminishing, so it's not having so big an effect. Um, but um, yeah, uh, as I say, if you look at our tack lines, <laughs> it's we've been a bit all over the place. I disagree, we've been consistently going west, because we're here. <laughs> that is true. And uh, Hookhead is definitely rising out of the uh, sea. <laughs> We're not very good pupils, you and me. No, we are not. Oh, God. You know, we're waiting for a particular transit to happen. Uh, and then, we, then we're going to do another tack, yet another one. I came up with a bit of proverbial wisdom that says a watched headland never transits. <laughs> so I've yeah. turned my back on it. Turned her bed back on the transit. Oh, but I've got a little bit of luff in, but we're going south now on these. Initially, we were going um, on the east, southeast. Yeah, sorry, south, southeast. South, southeast. But we are at least now going south. south. But the last one was dead lucky because we went sort of like south, southwest. We did, but this one's just south. But. You know. But at least it's not going east. It's not going east anymore, which meant we were going backwards, but never mind. Yeah. Oh, anyway. We're getting there. We just slowly. need to go far enough south that the next tack will take us to the lighthouse yeah. or a little bit past it. That's the plan. Yeah. Uh, oh, like I say, patience, the hardest lesson. <laughs> The sunset. No, it's called Sail Beyond the Sunset. I'll sail beyond the sunset. For I shall sail beyond the sunset to the baths of all the western stars. Yeah, well, I'm sailing into the sunset at the moment. <laughs> 